Welcome to my shop. This is where I start um, heirloom tomatoes and peppers from seed in late winter, usually um, mid-February through mid-March, to get them ready for market. Today I'm going to take you in the shop and show you, um, explain a few things about grow lights, uh, specifically LED lights versus the old shop lights that have the fluorescent bulbs. So, and the differences that they make to the plants. I've started peppers already, so you'll be able to see some of those. And then when I get ready to start the tomatoes, that will be a different video and I will take you through start to finish on how to start successful heirloom tomatoes. But today, let's talk lights, okay? Follow me. Okay, I'm going to talk about five major categories that have to do with uh, lights for growing seeds indoors. Um, the first category is just some basics. Um, LED lights versus um, fluorescent shop lights. For the last 10 years, I've used shop lights, which uh, used one warm bulb and one cool bulb, and things were just fine. However, it's a lot harder to find those now. Almost impossible, I think. They're stopping making them. Um, but if you can find them, they're cheap. LED lights are what is being manufactured now. And they have some pros and maybe some cons. Um, we'll see. But the basic things to know about LED versus the um, fluorescent shop lights, um, LED lights are a little bit more expensive. They draw less electrical energy. Um, they provide le um, less heat, so they're very cool on the plants. Some people think that's a pro, some a con. The main thing to know with LED lights, as far as growing seedlings, is they, I'm gonna turn this on. The, the light itself gets to the edges. It encompasses much more space uh, gives the energy to the plants in a much wider range. Whereas the um, shop lights, the plant has to be directly under the light to get the energy that it needs to grow. So that's a big plus for me because it means less room. Um, and typically if you have a tray and the lights are not right under it, the edges are going to be um, they're going to grow less quickly than the other ones. And speaking of quickly, that's the other advantage that LED lights have. They will grow your plants <laughs> twice as fast. Um, and that is a plus unless you don't plan for it. If you uh, need to pot up your plants and it's still cold outside and they're growing like crazy and you don't have any more room, it's not such a great thing. So you need to know, uh, you need to test things and find out how fast you want your plants to grow because they will grow faster with the LED lights. Okay, now let's go on to the second category. Okay, the second category has to do with how far away the LED lights need to be from your seedlings. Now there's three things to know about grow lights. Um, you need to know a little bit about lumens and that's gonna determine, that's directly proportional to how far it is away, it should be away from the plant. My grow light, this grow light is 5,000 lumens. I got it at uh, Walmart and uh, so 5,000 lumens, this needs to be about four and a half inches away from the plant. Now, in the uh, marijuana growers and some of the other uh, big growers, they'll have 30,000 lumens and they can put them on their ceiling and it will cover the surface of all of their plants. So they can be a lot further away than four and a half inches. <laughs> So that's lumens. Lumens is the amount of energy that the plant it receives to grow. Um, watts is something else you'll see. Uh, this one says 250 watts. Watts are pretty irrelevant. Um, it's, it's just how much it's gonna cost. Um, 
it relates to cost. So, and then the daylight, this one says daylight on it. Daylight refers to the, the color spectrum. Um, two things to know about colors. Um, the red color spectrum relates to flowering growth and the blue relates to vegetative growth. So for seedlings, all I want is the vegetative growth. I'm not going to grow them to flowering stage in the shop. That's going to happen outside. So I'm interested in uh, at least having enough cool light that it will um, take care of the vegetative growth. So most of them, um, daylight simply means it has the full spectrum. So I'm going to experiment with that, but those are the three things. Lumens is the energy, the most important thing. Uh, color, blue and red relate to vegetative and flowering, and watts relates to cost, okay? Now, on to category three. <laughs> okay, category three relates to how long you need to leave the grow lights onto your seedlings for optimal growth. So the standard out there is 16 hours. It really actually depends on the space that you're growing them in. As you can see in this shop, I have a lot of ambient light coming through from all, from north, south, all over the place. I don't need uh, 16 hours, um, but it also depends on the plant. With tomatoes, you can, uh, it doesn't, you can leave them on 24 hours for a while, but once they reach the saturation point and they have gotten as much energy as they can from the lumens or the light, uh, then it is detrimental to leave the lights on them too much longer. Um, they, it will reduce production. However, with peppers, um, you can leave them on 24 hours and it's no problem. So the answer is, it depends. It depends on what you're growing and it depends on your space. If you're growing in a closet and you have no light whatsoever, um, feel free to leave them on 16 to 24 hours. Just know when to stop. It's a volume issue. Volume of light that they receive is cumulative over time. So. That's that. Now on to number four. <laughs> okay, number four. So um, this relates a little bit to the last couple of issues, how close to leave the light and how long. It's called troubleshooting. And you're going to have to test this out in your own area because your space will be different than mine and the plants that you grow will probably be different than mine. But know that if, you, if your plants start turning kind of a purplish color, that means that you've had the light on them for too long. And so you need to back off a little bit. If they're kind of a yellowish color, these are still uh, seedlings, so you can't really tell. But um, if the plants are, are taller and they're, they're yellowing, then you have the light too close. And you need to raise the light uh, or lower the plant same thing <laughs> so um, if you're working like in a, a closet or a small space and you might have your your light laid across a table like this um, you can put uh, your tray underneath it and you have books or something that you can keep stacking so that you can keep raising it higher and higher and higher you just need to adjust and those are a couple of troubleshooting tips on how to adjust. Okay, and uh, now number five, and then we're done. Okay, category number five, and the last one that we'll talk about today um, is called photo period. And um, it, it goes back to how long should you leave the lights on. Different plants require different, they either require or they benefit from um, periods of uninterrupted darkness. So like a poinsettia needs and it requires a certain amount of darkness before it will flower. Some plants just do better if they have a certain amount and like tomatoes are called what's called day length neutral. So they don't really care how much. They do care how close the light is and all that um, and what color the light is. 
but um, I'm going to go into these concepts a lot in a lot more detail in a post. So if you want to know more about each of these categories, check out farmtojar.com and I will go through these and, and identify what I've talked about in more detail. All right. And I will be back in about two weeks, mid-March, and I'll show you exactly how to start the peppers from seed and every step that I take close up. All right, I'll see you then.